morning. We never intended to be in Chenmi Choke Market three days in a row, but this coincidence has proved to be a pleasant one because it means we've been able to get masala chai and samosas three days in a row. On top of that, we did walk past the Red Fort on the way in and it does look like they are accepting visitors, so we might just be in luck today. We have made it to the UNESCO World Heritage Site that is known as the Red Fort or Lao Kila. Little tip, if you're coming here, actually get off at the Jama Masid station because it is closer to the entrance of the Red Fort, although you'll exit at the Lao Kila station. So you can use both metros. Tickets cost 600 rupees each, which is about 10 Canadian dollars each. And fun story, we basically feel like celebrities because while walking in, we were accosted, but that sounds mean because they were actually very lovely people. We were politely asked. By one tourist, if they, he could take a photo with us. And that spiraled into about five or six different people asking to take selfies with me, selfies with Nick. Then they wanted photos with both of us. So that took a good five minutes of our time, but we're finally here and we're going to explore. So what we just walked through is actually a covered bazaar. It's quite rare apparently in the architecture at the time to have had that, but essentially there was room for a just shops upon shops upon shops upon shops so imagine behind me what is now quite quiet being bustling full of people selling their wares which unlike the one EM which was for public audiences this is more for private audiences and receiving special guests all of these buildings that you're seeing so far is actually part of the palace grounds which were also built inside the red fort so not only was this a place of fortification like with other places that we've seen before but it's also a residence for emperors and royalty within the Mughal Empire at the time. Over the course of history, the Mughal Empire has been attacked by several nations including the Persians under Nadar Shah and of course the British and so the Red Fort was plundered and parts of it got destroyed over time but coincidentally the British decided to repair this fort and restore it between 1899 and 1905 because George V and Queen Victoria were coming for a visit so that's why it's in as good condition as it is in present day even though it's 400 years old and in 1947 the first prime minister of india raised a flag 
outside of Lahori Gate, which is how you enter the Red Fort. And now, every year on their Independence Day, the Indian flag is raised and he gives a speech which is broadcast countrywide. The Red Fort was really enjoyable. I had no idea that the site was as large as it was going to be, but it is a lot of walking, so be prepared to get a lot of your steps in. But I think the thing that impressed me the most, besides just the size of it all, was the fact that actually a lot of the buildings, when it was all first constructed anyway, definitely in the days of the Shah, was all outdoor space. Like it didn't look like there were many kind of closed off rooms or anything that was really kind of indoors. So clearly the intention was for everybody to live outside as much as possible. I know that there were roofs on a lot of the buildings, but there were no walls. It just really made it interesting because I don't think we've really seen anything like that before. No, and I know that it was destroyed and then rebuilt, but it's still impressive how well preserved the colors and the paintings are on the walls, considering that because it is open plan, it's very exposed to the sun. Save for a couple of little bits of cleaning, then it looks pretty much the same as it would have done back then. It's pretty impressive. It's just a shame that you can't really go up and into a lot of the buildings. Yeah. So you're having to kind of admire the art on the walls and ceilings and arches from afar. But overall though, for $10 each, I think that was worth a visit. We are at the metro station and headed to the next UNESCO World Heritage Site. but it's just not his tomb that is based here. There are several smaller tombs that line the pathway leading up to his tomb, and those all belong to nobles and important people of the time, and they predate his tomb by like 20 years. Humayun was the second leader of the Mughal Empire. He passed on in 1556 and two years later his first wife commissioned this tomb, which is the first garden tomb in the whole of the Indian subcontinent. It's also one of the first to be created from red sandstone, which then went on to inspire a number of other buildings that we have already seen in Delhi so far, as well as across India.
we've now taken a walk around and it is hugely impressive considering that this is a precursor to the Taj Mahal and predates it by about a hundred years. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. I think what's also really impressive is the fact that it's not just a tomb for one person, but actually there's about a hundred different tombs just on this building alone. So just really, really interesting to see. And I think alongside the building, then all of the other tombs, the mosques, the gardens, everything is just gorgeous, even now. Yeah, it is a very big complex and it all seems to be in very good condition. Just for the age of it, it really looks good. Like I'm looking at the facade of it right now and the marble looks clean, the sandstone looks clean. An interesting thing about this tomb is that there are many Stars of David on it, which I'm trying to understand. But yeah, I really like the simplicity of the Mughal architecture that we're seeing. And I think it's because we haven't really seen much of it before. I say much of it, any before coming to India, where we're now seeing a lot of it. But it's just beautiful. Not too sure what we're gonna do now, but uh... I guess we'll find out soon enough. From Hamayan's tomb, we decided to take an Uber. Actually, no, it was just a normal taxi. It cost 120 rupees, which is like just under two Canadian dollars to get to India Gate. India Gate was built as a First World War memorial, but has since been used to commemorate fallen Indian soldiers for every war since then, as well as in the First World War. And its first stone was laid in 1921, and then it was officially commemorated upon opening in 1931. Looks pretty impressive. Absolutely, but I think that it is time to find some more water, some food, and head home for an afternoon rest before we take you out to dinner with us. It is almost eight o'clock and we've just been chilling for a few hours, recovering from our long day of sightseeing, but we are so excited to take you out for dinner with us. Last night we tried this restaurant called Sai Kirasoi. I think that's how we pronounce it. We'll show you the restaurant and it was so good, which is why we are going back tonight. It's an all vegetarian place and the quality of the food is exceptional. So because we liked it so much, we really wanted to show you what it's all about. Last night we had the chap korma with butter naan and apparently that's the restaurant's specialty but i think we're going to try something else tonight if we're not careful we're going to make our way through the menu but i'm very excited for that
you can see how much we hated it. It was clearly disgusting and we will never come back. I was about midway through editing the video at which point I realized that we hadn't done a sign off. Rachel is not camera ready in her own words, so with that, and then she's just filming me. But until next time, take care. And keep smiling. We have made it to the UNESCO World, although you will exit at the... We are at the metro station and headed to the next World UNESCO. We're at the metro station and headed to the next...